Once upon a time, everything started. We are in Boston, Massachusetts, aren't Correct. we now? You've been through a breakup or two. Correct. Two. So you logged on to the site last year. Tell me a little bit about that and why you did. It was my first boyfriend, my first long-term boyfriend, my first true love. I really felt like, I mean, I know I'm young, but I really felt like it could have been the one. When it didn't work out, I was devastated. Absolutely devastated. And I never felt these feelings before. I didn't know what to do with them, these feelings and, and all these emotions. And where do they belong? And why was I feeling this way? It was actually kind of interesting. So I guess I wanted to learn more about myself. I guess kind of what was causing these feelings. You know, I do have a good support system. I'm lucky enough and very fortunate enough to have a good support system with my family and friends, but they're not always available and they get, it's tiring on them. And so when you're online, you have access 24 hours a day, whenever you want. And it's also nice to have a little bit of anonymity. So you, you got over the first one and mm -hmm. then met somebody new, not long after. How long was it between the first guy and the second guy? It was eight months. Okay, it's a bit of time. Yeah. You were ready to start again. I felt I was ready. In retrospect, maybe I wasn't as ready as I would have liked to have been. In all honesty, I was sick and tired of feeling down and low and depressed about the first guy. That I said, you know what, I'm ready. I think I'm ready. And I guess I was, considering at the time. And so I met guy number two, and things worked out for the most part. Till after the honeymoon period wore off. Yeah. <laughs> And what happened? How did it kind of come to an end? Well, I think once the honeymoon period wore off and we started to see each other for who we really were, I think we both started to not like each other as people. And that may sound a little harsh, but I think we both kind of realized that we're both good people, but we may, we may not be a good fit. And I know I was in denial about it. And I kept on thinking, well, the longer I hold on, the longer I'm in it, maybe things can change. Because with this guy, it was a pretty secure relationship where we were able to talk about whatever was on our minds. We were both also too sensitive, and that ended up being um, the demise. You know, I realized I don't want to throw people away just because they have baggage. Because I know I have baggage, and so did he, and we all have our insecurities. But at what point do you draw that line, you know, between wanting to be supportive and empathetic for your partner, your significant other, and being true to yourself and without being too draining on yourself, you know, to the point where you're miserable. So I stuck it out, and he did as well, and I think we both realized that it just wasn't a good fit. I mean, if I could be honest, right now, I don't know, and I'm struggling between do I miss him or do I miss the comfort of a relationship? What I do know is that I love being in a relationship, and I thought I loved being with him. So the answer right now is definitely no contact. I mean, I can't stress that enough, because I know myself, I know how I get with, you know, will he call? What should I say? What should I not say? What should I do? Should I email him? Should I send him flowers? You know, and I drive myself crazy. And so the answer to that is no contact. I want someone who won't turn their back on me even when I turn my back on myself. I want someone who will love me, warts and all. I want someone that's stable, emotionally stable, and isn't afraid to, I guess, explore things, you know, personal inner type feelings, and not be afraid of what may happen or what it may cause. I guess I want someone who isn't like me. I guess I've just described someone who isn't myself. <laughs> Opposites attract. Right. I want someone who's witty, someone who makes me laugh, someone who I find attractive. Doesn't have to be dropped a gorgeous, but something. What's been the good stuff that's happened since the breakups? I guess what comes to mind first is that I knew that if I could go through this, if I could survive a heartbreak, then I can survive anything. Because I've been fortunate enough in my life to never have had a lot of tragedy and misfortune. So this was really my first big loss. You know, I, w I almost wanted there to be a magic pill to take the pain away. But then, you know, I realized if I hadn't have gone through it, I think it made me a more empathetic and sympathetic person to, you know, be able to talk to my peers about it. And whenever they have a problem, I can relate now. It's like, being part of a club, <laughs> you know, an exclusive club, the Heartbreak Club. Yeah. You, know, that you can't describe it unless you've been through it. No. And um, I read a lot of self-help books. So I was able to kind of take that and use it as a time or as an opportunity, I guess, to grow in, in, in ways and to kind of look at myself. Some of the mistakes that I've made in the past is I've let fear kind of take control of my life. That There's a positive right there. For After the first relationship, I realized I'm not going to let fear dictate my life. And that's what I realized, that, you know, just living is taking risks, and we're all in it together. I almost thank God that I've been through it. When the good happens, I can appreciate it so much more. 
the best is definitely yet to come. It's gotta be. It's exciting. Oh, it was love. It was love. It was love. It was love. Right to the end.